Hello, uh, the topic of our lecture today is management of class 2 malocclusions. Okay, at the end of the topic, the student should be able to analyze the etiology and clinical features of class 2 division 1 and class 2 division 2 malocclusions. And the student should be able to explain and formulate the provisional treatment plan for class 2 division 1 and division 2 malocclusions. Okay, the definition of a class 2 malocclusion is a presence of anterior posterior or AP discrepancy whereby the maxilla and or the maxillary dentition is positioned forwards in relation to the mandible or the mandibular dentition. Okay, class 2 malocclusion can be divided into two divisions, uh, namely division 1 whereby the upper incisors are proclined and you have division 2 whereby the upper incisors are retroclined. Okay, now a skeletal classification, uh, the class 2 malocclusion is, uh, can be caused by uh, two, two factors or combination of the two. One is the maxilla may be prognatic or the mandible may be retrognatic and or a combination of both maxillary prognatism and mandibular retrognatism. Okay, Wander Linden's classification of class 2 division 2 it divides class 2 division 2 into three types, namely type A, type B and type C. Now the in type A both the central and lateral incisors are retroclined, but the retroclination is mild. Whereas in type B only the centrals are retroclined whereby the lateral incisor overlaps the central incisors. In type C the both centrals and laterals are retroclined with the canines overlapping the lateral incisors. Now, what is the etiology of a class 2 malocclusion? You can broadly divide the factors into three groups prenatal factors, natal factors, and postnatal factors. Now, prenatal factors can be genetic or here hereditary factors could be the action of teratogens, uh, irradiation during pregnancy, intrauterine fetal position example if hands or, uh, of the fetus uh, lies over the face that may um, uh, impede mandibular development. Now natal factors that is factors during the uh, birth process itself usually involves improper forceps application during forceps delivery. Now postnatal factors are factors uh, after birth. It can be due to trauma to the condylar region, long-term irradiation, oral habits like digit sucking and rheumatoid arthritis. What are the clinical features of a class 2 DIF1 malocclusion? Let's look at the extra oral features. The patient has a convex facial profile. The nasolabial angle may be increased. The chin is retrognatic. The upper lid is short and hypotonic. And the lips may be incompetent. There is lower lip trap. The labiomental sulcus is deep and they may have a long face meaning uh, increased vertical facial proportions. Now the intraoral features we have a class 2 molar relationship. The upper incisors are proclined leading to an increase over jet, an increased curve of speed, a v-shaped arch there may be a posterior crossbite and there may be a very deep overbite. Now, the clinical features of class 2 DIF2 malocclusion extra orally, they are also uh, they have a convex facial profile. The lip line is very high, meaning the 
up lower lip rests high up on the upper incisors now this position of the lip is what causes the upper incisors to be retroclined there may be lip overclosure there may be hyperactive mentalis which is evident as puckering of the cheek and there's a deep mentolabial sulcus and they may have a short face syndrome meaning uh, the vertical facial proportion lower vertical facial proportions are reduced okay intraoral features of class 2 deep to malocclusion there is class 2 molar relationship uh, retroclined central and all lateral incisors sometimes rarely even the canines are retroclined too there's a reduced overjet the overbite is normally very deep the inter incisal angle is increased and the arch is usually a u-shaped arch now what are the object or treatment objectives in a class 2 division 1 mall occlusion one we want to relieve the crowding and correct local irregularities we want to reduce the incisal overbite and also the incisal overjet and we want to collect correct the class 2 uh, relationship of the buccal segment now what are the three treat the treatment strategies in a class 2 deep one there are three one is growth modification one is camouflage and one is surgical correction now growth modification aims to produce a skeletal change while restricting unfavorable growth while promoting favorable growth now this treatment modality is most effective during period of growth acceleration usually is the pubertal growth spurt now meaning is bet best undertaken during mixed or early permanent dentition now it is debatable whether uh, true skeletal change can be achieved via growth modification and uh, success will depend on very good patient compliance now growth modification for maxillary excess or maxillary prognathism usually this involves using a head care to restrict maxillary growth either in the AP direction or the vertical direction or a combination of both direction now the forces are usually transmitted via the upper molars there are two type of headgears which can be used the cervical pull headgear where the force uh, is directed more horizontally and this can cause extrusion of molars and thus not suitable for high angle cases now the other type of headgear is the occipital or high pull headgear whereby the force is more vertical and posterior and it causes intrusion of the molars and this can be suitable for use in high angle cases now for maxillary excess combined with mandibular deficiency the headgear is used to restrict the maxillary growth but at the same time is combined with a functional appliance to promote mandibular growth now an example of this would be the van big activator which has got a flying EOT tube for insertion of the headgear face bow. Now, for mandibular deficiency, normally uh, growth mod modification is undertaken by a use of myofunctional appliance to stimulate mandibular growth. Now, this promotes condylar lengthening and remodeling of glenoid fossa the effect of this is both skeletal and dento alveolar effect the dento alveolar effect uh, involves differential eruption of the posterior teeth now examples of uh, 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 appliances for uh, this 
modality uh, can be divided into either removable appliances or fixed appliances. Removable appliances are such as twin blocks, bionators, a function regulator and an activator. A fixed one would be either be a herbs appliance or a jasper jumper. So these are uh, pictures of these some of these appliances. What you see here is a twin block and this is a bionator. This is a function regulated to and a fixed herbs appliance. Now the twin block is widely used because it is the only uh, myofunctional appliance which comes as two pieces and not one single large block and thus it is more compliance is much better compared with the other types of myofunctional appliances. Now the second modality of treatment is the camouflage treatment and camouflage treatment can be done either with two teeth extraction of teeth or without extraction of teeth. Now camouflage treatment is normally utilized for patients who have passed their growth and have no more growth potential in them. Um, the objective is to improve dental relationships while accepting the skeletal discrepancy. Now space will be required in the upper arch for overjet and overbite reduction and correcting any crowding in the upper arch while space is required in the lower arch for correction of molar relationship, uh, crowding and overbite reduction. Now the ideal teeth for extraction are the premolars and usually the first premolars are extracted if more than 5 mm of space is required whereas the second premolars are the teeth of choice if 2.5 to 5 mm of space is required. Now camouflage uh, treatment with teeth extraction so we use the extraction spaces for uh, overjet reduction, overbite reduction and correction of all the uh, crowding and local irregularities. Okay, now camouflage treatment without teeth ex extraction. Uh, this is undertaken in mild class 2 cases whereby the molar discrepancy, molar relationship discrepancy is less, less than half unit. Now, the space is acquired by two methods. If there is spacing in the arch due to missing teeth, uh, hyperdonture, etc., this spacing can be utilized. To, for overjet reduction. Now the other method is to do uh, molar distalization. Okay, molar distalization can be undertaken through various appliances. For example, you have the pendulum appliance, you have Jones stick, you have distal jet, you have a ACCO appliance. This means um, acrylic cervical. Uh, occipital appliance. You have fast back appliance, transpilator arches. We can use uh, intraoral repelling magnets, or we can even use the fixed functional appliances like herbs or a Jasper jumper. Now, class two elastics is utilized, uh, especially um, when uh, camouflage treatments undertaken together with extraction and class 2 elastics are usually stretched between the upper anterior segment to the lower posterior segment. Now this, the effect of class 2 elastic is to retract the upper labial segment while protracting the lower buccal segment. Okay, this comes from the horizontal force component of the elastics. Now there is also a vertical force component in the elastics which tends to extrude the upper anteriors and the lower posterior teeth. Therefore, these elastics are not suitable and should be used in caution in high angle cases. And elastics are normally used with fully bonded or banded fixed appliances. Now, sometimes when a class wood diff one presents with a deep bite, a deep bite correction is necessary for overjet reduction. 
Okay, and this can be achieved by using a removable anterior bite plane which encourages eruption of the posterior teeth. Also, it can be undertaken using fixed appliances by the way of uh, utility arches to intrude the anterior teeth. Now, sometimes a class 2 division 1 malocclusion may present with a, a posterior cross bite as in cases of um, digit sucking habit and this can be managed with a corrected by use of a removable appliances carrying a jack screw or a coffin spring or we could use uh, fixed appliances such as the w arch or the quad helix okay what are the treatment objectives in a class 2 division 2 uh, malocclusion one is we need to uh, achieve relief of gingival trauma as due which can arise due to the deep bite then we need to correct the incisor relationship we need to relieve crowding and correct local irregularities and correction of molar relationship now the treatment strategies in a class 2 div 2 is uh, one to extraction now the extraction is done to relieve crowding also helps in the correction of molar relationship and overjet reduction now uh, remember um, uh, you may be wondering why overjet reduction when a class 2 div 2 has no overjet this is because once the incisors has been uh, corrected to their normal uh, inclination you will get an overjet uh, opening up okay now uh, we can um, the overbite can be reduced by using an anterior bite plane or we can which is a removable appliance or we could use fixed appliances incorporating anchor bands or a reverse curve or spi in the arch wire and uh, the inclination can be corrected using either extra talking springs in the fixed appliances or the arch wire should ca could carry active top adjustment to correct the incisor inclination okay now if a class 2 div 2 is seen in a growing patient in the mixed dentition then an appliance can be used to convert the class 2 div 2 to a class 2 div 1 by proclining the upper incisors and once that is done then a myofunctional appliances can be used as, as the similarly we would do in a class uh, 2 division 1 case so Basically, to summarize the treatment strategy for a class 2 malocclusion, the first thing we have to see if it is a skeletal problem or whether it is a dental, uh, dental alveolar problem. Now, if it is a dental alveolar problem, uh, whether it is a growing or non-growing patient, orthodontic treatment is carried out, conventional orthodontic treatment. Now, for skeletal problems, it's different whether the patient is growing or non-growing. In a patient that is growing, we can use uh, either um, uh, uh, myofunctional appliances or headgear or a combination of both, depending on where the skeletal problem is, whether it's in the maxilla, in the mandible, or whether it's in both. Now, in a non-growing patient, uh, if it is mild to moderate class 2, then it can be undertaken, uh, uh, can be treated by orthodontic camouflage by extraction of teeth. Okay, in a severe class 2, uh, class 2 uh, skeletal pattern, then uh, we will need to do a surgical correction. And again, the type of surgical correction, uh, whether single arch or both uh, by arch surgery will depend on 
the nature of the skeletal problem whether it is the maxilla the mandible or a combination of both okay thank you